McAllister. Galangos with it, though. Fresh. Cool, the right man. side. McAllister with the ball. He scores! Nice. Welcome back to another episode on the channel. So today uh, we are doing our first uh, in-person interview or podcast, whatever you want to call this. And we have a very special guest with us today. So we have the uh, leading scorer in Division One NCAA hockey right now uh, in Ryan McAllister. Um, so obviously that's a pretty awesome accomplishment so far this season. Um, but I, I always joke around with this. I think the the highlight of everyone's careers playing with Coach Barks uh, <laughs> back in the day. So uh, Ryan, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude, for sure. Um, so Ryan, uh, you know, obviously I played with him, super skilled player. Um, so it's not a surprise to me uh, the season that he's having. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna go back and start from kind of his minor midget season, U16, um, and kind of walk through the process of what it took to uh, get where he is today. Um, me just kind of knowing um, who he is and what he's been through, it's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, so Ryan, just tell them a little bit about, you know, U16, what was going on that year? Yeah, you know, I, I got cut in, in my minor midget year from, from AAA and, you know, that was obviously, obviously really tough for me, but when I talked to my family and, and a lot of my friends and we just decided that, that I was going to continue playing hockey and, and even play AA and minor midget and, you know, a lot of people think that, that that's the end of the road when, when you don't get drafted at the OHL, but, you know, just, just I kept working and, you know, I didn't think that I had too good of a chance to, to end up making that major midget team with, with Blake over here that, that was already on the team before the tryouts, but, you know, I ended up making the team and, you know, started off kind of kind of 13th forward there, but I found my way uh, onto a line with, with Blake and, and Cass and I think we did pretty well for sure. Yeah, yeah, he, he showed up, and I remember tryouts, you were just lighting it up, so, uh, like, I had no idea who you were at the time. Um, yeah, so he had a really good year uh, with U18, right? Yeah, it went out like good. I ended up scoring uh, 25 goals, and I only played 25 games because I, I ended up breaking my collarbone. It was it was probably my own fault. I should have passed it to Barks instead of trying to backhand totally drag on a three-on-one, but, you know, uh, yeah, just, you know, that was also a little bit of adversity to to go through a broken, broken collarbone and I was also uh, top of the league at, at that time in points and you know that was uh, that was really hard for me and you know but you know I just came through and you know I, Barks definitely helped me come back from injury pretty well and you know I ended up uh, getting drafted in the in the midget draft by by Sudbury there and you know that kind of got my confidence back a little bit and you know it just shows that that if you don't get drafted in minor midget it, it's not the end of the road. So so you get drafted by Sudbury you go to their camp. Yeah. Um, you know, share what you're able to say, but like, what were the conversations like with the team? Because I remember you telling me, you know, some things and you're considering, you know, should I go or should I yeah. not go? Yeah, I mean, I obviously had a, a junior B offer with, uh, with the London Nationals in, back in London, but you know, I went to camp and I ended up doing pretty well. And they uh, they offered to for me to play uh, an exhibition game. But but as you guys know that that if you guys do end up playing an exhibition game or you stay there for, for more than 48 hours, you, you lose uh, NCAA eligibility. So you know, I had to really think about that and, you know, talk to my family again. And we just decided that, you know, if, if, if that wasn't the time for me, I was going to go back and, you know, play a little bit of junior B and, and then make my decision from there. So I'm glad I did that. And like during the time, I'm sure that was like a tough, yeah, tough sure. decision to make. Yeah. Um, so obviously, like Ryan said, he like talked to his family. I'm sure he talked to some other um, people that he yeah. trusted. Um, and I mean, it worked out for him. So yeah, it did for sure. Um, so then you're you're with the Nationals as as a 17 year old, yeah. and uh, talk us through that that first season in Junior B. Yeah, it was my first kind of taste of Junior, and you know the Nats are are kind of a a really high up organization over there, and it's, it's hard to get ice time playing with all those uh, ex OHLers and you know those guys that are 20 years old, and you know they know the way, and I'm just a young 17 year old, but. Thankfully, I, I ended up getting traded to, to Kamoka again with, to play with Parks and, and my buddy Owen Say. So, you know, that was, that was also a, a moment in my career that now I'm really thankful for is that I got traded to, to Kamoka. Yeah, so definitely, um, you know, when Cali got traded to Kamoka, um, he, was, he was playing lots more. Yeah. Um, like PP1, you know, first, first yeah. line minutes and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, he, he ended up, uh, you committed that year yeah. um, from Junior yeah. B. So, you know, that's that's pretty rare. I mean, at least from my knowledge yeah. um, of that happening. So can you share like kind of what the conversations we're having? What what went into you 
committing out of that, that junior B league? Yeah, so uh, I started out with, with my advisor, uh, Chad Liley, works with, with A1 Hockey. He's, uh, he's a great advisor. If, if any of you guys are thinking about it, uh, he's definitely a guy that, that knows the way and knows how to get guys committed to the Division One level. So, yeah, I mean, I talked to him, and he had a connection with, with Dave Shyak, who's now at uh, St. Cloud, but, but at the time he was at Western Michigan. And, you know, he came down to watch a couple games against some top teams of the league, like the Nationals and, and the Maroons there in Chatham. And, you know, just through the playoffs, he was still watching, and, you know, I ended up getting that commitment. And, you know, it was, uh, it was a super special moment for, for me and my family just to, you know, to, to see the hard work pay off. And so, like, you get that commitment, what, and, and I don't know all the details, obviously, but, you know, you commit, but, uh, you know, people can also decommit yeah. and, and stuff like that. So what was kind of, like, the expectation for you moving forward after they committed you? Yeah, you know, I, I didn't really know what the, what the future held. I just knew that I wasn't going into school for, for at least two years there, but I ended up taking, taking three years of junior, so started off in, in the BCHL, and no, it uh, didn't go too too great for me. I wasn't getting a lot of minutes, and you know it was it was hard with the with the style of, of play that Prince George actually played with the uh, with the with the dump and chase, and you know like they like to lay the body over there. So I ended up uh, getting traded again. You know I was I was a bit of a suitcase there for a while. Uh, I got traded to Brooks uh, with the Bandits, and I'm sure a lot of you either know or, or don't know, but it's a it's an amazing organization that uh, Kale McCarr came from, and you know they just love to play with a lot of skill and. Even there, my, my first year and second year in Brooks uh, wasn't the greatest. And then kind of third year just, just took off there. And last year, and, you know, I ended up uh, having a lot of points. And, you know, that's, I think last year was, the, was another defining moment in, in my hockey career where my confidence just, just grew to the next level. Yeah, so um, going, going back to, so you, you committed, going to the BCHL, so like, um, for most people that are aware, I mean, the BCHL is a uh, better league than the Goge here in Ontario. <laughs> yeah. um, so was that kind of the idea of why you went out west to play or what went into that decision? Yeah, so right after when, when we finished there with Kamulka, our, 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 uh, our dramatic playoff run where we beat Chatham, <laughs> that, was, that was an awesome moment. But yeah, uh, Prince George from the BC called me right away. just told me about their program and you know I ended up uh, taking a visit out there and you know saw saw a game when they were in the finals of, of the BCHL and you know it was uh it was my first experience of, of junior A hockey and just watching it and I was just kind of mesmerized by by the hockey over there and you know I ended up uh, going there but I had great billets it was a it was a pretty good town so you know just 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 wasn't the right fit for me and it was Western Michigan were they like kind of telling you directing you in that play in the BC or the AJ like to develop your game more like were they influencing that decision as well yeah I mean I think a, I think a lot of division one hockey teams especially the, the topper teams up there want you to either play in the, the USHL the BCHL or, or even sometimes sometimes the AJHL but you know uh yeah the, the BCHL is a great league if if any of you guys are thinking about playing a uh, division one division one hockey one day I think going over there it's it's pretty much guaranteed you'll get committed if, if you do well so and so you know, Cali's saying, you know, he played here for the Nationals in Kamoka. Then he goes to the BCHL living in British Columbia. Yeah. And now, our, and then after that, going to Alberta and playing in, you know, Alberta. Um, so what was that like mentally, like going from all these different places and, and lots of changes, obviously, in a short period of time? Yeah, I think, I think it really helps if, if you have good billets. And, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely tough being away from your family for the first time. And, you know, I went away when, when I was 17, turning 18, so I was really young, but, you know, as you, as you get older, it, it, uh, it gets easier over time, and, you know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not the hardest thing in the world to, to move away from your family, because you're with the boys all the time, so, you know, it's, uh, it's really fun, and, you know, it's, I, I can't speak highly enough about uh, playing junior hockey out west, so. Yeah, and for, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Callie's being pretty humble, but he broke the AJHL um, scoring record for a season, got the MVP of you know, the junior A, tier two, C, yeah. all, all of the leaks. So he had, he had a pretty ridiculous year, um, pretty crazy year. Uh, like, and, and then you ended up getting invited to some NHL camps from yeah. that, right? Yeah, I did. I, I got invited to, to Vegas first. So that was kind of uh, another surreal moment for me where it was my first uh, NHL camp invite. And then I've been a Leaf fan my whole life. So and when I got the opportunity to, to go to the to go to the Leaf camp too, I, I took that one. So it was uh, they were definitely both great experiences. So you know, obviously the AJ is not the OHL 
WHL or the Q, but you know, there, here's Kali getting invited to uh, camps from a junior A tier two league out west. So um, goes to show, you know, the caliber of, of the league that yeah. it is um, that they're sending you out there right, yeah. to the camps. Um, so what would you say, like what you were saying the first two years were pretty good. And then yeah. the third year you just had a monstrous year. What, what would you credit that to? Did you do anything differently or, uh, you know, I just, I just think I had to, to, you know, really look at uh, what I was going to do in, in the future of hockey. And, you know, after my second year in Brooks, it, it wasn't going too well. And, you know, I just kind of took the summer and, and, you know, trained really hard and was on the ice pretty much every single day. And, you know, just, you have to have that, that inner confidence in yourself. You know, it's just, you can't, you, I don't think you can be a good hockey player without confidence. So you really just got to have a little bit of, of swagger to you. And, you know, you just got to think that, that, you know, you're going to go out there and have a good game. So, and that's, that's definitely something I noticed, um, you know, with you when we were playing, yeah. like you had that confidence and, you know, if, if Cali didn't score one or two games, like he's like, what's going on? <laughs> I, I should be scoring every game. And that yeah. was just kind of his mentality that he had. Um, and I, I think that definitely helped, um, in his transitions going from the different levels and stuff. So, um, he always thought highly of his, of himself. And I feel like, you know, when you're going through, through, um, slumps, like, I feel like Callie didn't get that down. He was just, yeah. you know, confident that, that things were going to turn around. So, um, so now we're, you know, we're past that, that kind of junior, junior career. And now you've, uh, made your way and you're playing Western Michigan. So, um, what was that like moving there and, and what's it been like so far? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been awesome. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a rare occurrence for, for a freshman to, to come in and, you know, get, get the opportunity that, that I've stepped into, but I, you know, I got really lucky with, with the turnover that the team had and, you know, a lot of the older guys leaving and I talked to my coach a lot in the summer and he just told me to, to be ready for, for the role I was going to play. And, you know, I think I just, I stepped in and, you know, I, I kind of just carried over the, the junior season I had last year and, you know, that, that confidence again that, that I built and, you know, you, you can't lose it if you're, if you're going up levels or even down, down to the next level, you know, it's, it's okay. You, you gotta just always have that confidence in yourself. And so, um, for, for someone that's looking to play NCAA or wondering what the experience is like, like take us through a little bit of, you know, what a day in a life would look like for you. Yeah. So as a, as a freshman, I, I live in the, in a, in a dorm with, with one of my teammates and, you know, right beside us is two other of my teammates, so, you know, it's really fun. And, you know, you're, you're, you're real close to each other and, you know, it's awesome. But yeah, so pretty much Mondays and Tuesdays, we'll, we'll work out at eight or, or 9 a.m. and. So, so that's, that's not bad, but it's a little bit of an early wake up there and we practice around uh 10 or, or 10 30 there. And, you know, so, so practice and workouts early in the morning and then depends if you have class or, or online class. I, I opted to, to take the online ones in my first year, just a little slower and kind of just, kind of just get into things a little better, but you know, it's a, uh, it's a great experience for sure. And, uh, so kind of, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're here where you are right now. Um, what, what has led to your success so far, um, this season? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I stepped in and I play with, uh, two great, two great players in, in Max Sasson and, and Jason Poland, Poland being a, a fourth year senior and, and Sasson being a, a really good, uh, second year sophomore. So, you know, it's, uh, it's awesome and that I get to play with those guys and, and, you know, I get to play on the first power play and, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely amazing and obviously my family support and, you know, uh, at the next level, when you go to college, the, the off ice training as well is uh, just just the next step up, so I think it really helps. Um, so, you know, I think it would be good to kind of finish off um, us talking here with what advice would you give to, <clears throat> let's say, you know, a 13, 14 year old kid and they're wanting to play at a high level and kind of their options are in Ontario, right? Like let's yeah. play, let's play junior, play in the OHL yeah. or play D1. So what would you say to them? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if, if you want to go the OHL road, I, I would say if you think you're ready, then, then you're ready. That's obviously a great route. There's a lot of, a lot of NHL players out there. But, you know, if you're a little bit of a late bloomer like me and, you know, things that at 15, 16 are, aren't going too well for you, I think, uh, you know, just, just kind of take your time and, you know, don't rush things. I, I, played, I played junior B when I was 17 and, you know, played junior A, 18, 19, 20, and then, I ended up going to school at, at now 20 and I, I just turned 21 and I'm in my freshman year. So, you know, it's, if you want to go the NCAA route, you definitely have a lot of time and, 
you know, I'd, if I want to stay four years at school, that that's great. And, you know, NCAA route definitely gives you the option to, you know, prolong your career and kind of gives uh, the late bloomers a chance. So if, if you're one of those, and it's a, it's a great option for you. And uh, I, I totally agree with everything you're saying there. And um, kind of, you can kind of see what Callie was saying and what I was saying at the start of the video was, you know, he had a lot of ups and downs where, you know, and uh, his minor midget year doesn't get picked for a triple A team. He's playing double A. Then he goes to junior and he's not playing much with the Nats. Yeah. Gets traded to Kamoka where he's playing a little more. And then the same situation when he goes to the BCHL. He didn't like that. Um, the style they were playing there wasn't playing that much. So, you know, that's just showing, you know, how much you had to adapt and go through to get where you are today. Right? Yeah, for sure. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people may have given up. Yeah at one of those points in time. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're in a position, um, I think Cali's a good example. Like you don't need to stay where you are. Mm -hmm. Um, so like if, if things aren't working, you don't like where you're playing, um, for whatever reason, like, you know, don't just say I'm going to tough it out the yeah. whole year or whatever. Like, you know, how many games did you play for the Nats and, and yeah, I, I can't even remember at this point. I, I know I only played uh, 19 games for, for Kamoka, but no, it was, I think I only had uh, maybe 10 points with the Nats, but I played uh, 19 games with Kamoka and ended up having 19 points. So it was, it was great. So yeah, like, um, yeah, Cali, you know, he went where he was wanted and where he was going to find success yeah. um, for what he wanted to do. So um, yeah, I think this is an awesome story, especially for young hockey players that are, you know, looking to have some answers or kind of see what it's like to actually go through the process. So you look at Cali and he's, you know, you see him leading in NCAA points and most people see those rewards. Um, but not a lot of the time is the process that it took to get there. Yeah. Um, so that was the whole point of this video. Um, hope you guys learned something uh, from the video. A special thanks to Cali for coming on. Um, so we really appreciate having you on here. Thanks, Blake, for sure. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the next one. Well, not to Spain to be in my domain, automotive bitch. Ooh.